I haven't been gaming as much as I'd have liked to recently. Too busy on uni work and running tournaments. One to check out is Defense of the Australians. Seriously, guys, get on it. There are some amazing plays. More to the point, I haven't been playing many games because I don't have many games, and I don't have many games because I'm POV. So I generally seek out free-to-play games, like a hungry fat man seeking out the last Kit Kat bar in the house. The problem with free-to-play games is that they're free-to-play. This brings with it developer issues, low-budget cuts causing bugs and fallacies, a non-AAA title meaning inadequate graphics and potentially gameplay, and microtransactions. Now, I want to make a clear difference between free-to-play games and pay-to-win games, as often the two become synonymous. A pay-to-win game is not a free-to-play game that I actively seek out, as much as I enjoy the challenge of being constantly pummeled by somebody who could be running a hack tool, unbeknownst to me, and there are several ways of setting up good and bad free-to-play games. I'd like to think there are four different types of free-to-play games, ranging from the very well-marketed to the very poorly implemented. The first type I like to call the Dota 2 type. And yes, I'm allowed to have name bias on my own made-up category, so fuck you. This system relies on money intake from cosmetic and extra game items. The game playing aspect of the game is completely free. All the characters are free, all the maps are free, all the gameplay extras are free, such as coaching, guilds, and team creation. So what's not free? Cosmetic items, such as custom weapons and armor, tournament tickets, custom sounds, and UI skins. But wait, client-side overrides are completely okay, and the tournaments can be watched via a live stream on Twitch. So why bother putting any money into it at all? Exactly. And I simply don't know enough about the industry to know whether this only works because of the huge name Valve has made for itself and the fact that the developers are so well known. Drifting slightly from Type Dota 2 is Type League of Legends. It's the same sort of system, but certain aspects of play mode have been limited, in LoL's case, the heroes. There's still a selection of free-to-play heroes weekly, which isn't a bad idea as it encourages diversity. The third, and usually most common form of managing microtransactions, is the Tribes type. A system by which everything can be unlocked immediately, or as soon as you have the specific currency for it, but it can also be purchased. This works on the condition that the purchasable or upgradable items are not better than the originals, but different, clearly making sure it's not pay to win. These types also include a part of the game which can only be purchased using real world money, but if it affects the actual gameplay, it's a Type 4, the Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Phantoms Type scum at the bottom of the festering pool, limits you to one custom loadout, and lets you try items you don't want to buy with real world money. Why not just release it as a paid game? Ah, oh, because it's shit. And instead of using what little developer money you have, marketing it for $10 on Steam and calling it an early access, you'll pretend it's free and laugh maniacally as the test rats question any method of actually progressing through the game. Blacklight, Warframe, Planetside, and most free-to-play MMOs fall into this category. And they really have to walk the tightrope to not fall down to their pay-to-win doom. In the case of Phantoms, it assures itself as a pay-to-win system by having a tier system that, although is unlockable through time and effort, i.e. grinding, can be purchased immediately and are sure upgrades. There's an innate double-edged sword, however, to having a balanced free-to-play game. If it's not pay-to-win, why pay? Why not just play? How do you make money off it? If it is pay-to-win, why play and as a consequence grind? Why not just pay? Finally, there are the games which cheekily avoid that tightrope by having both a free-to-play and potential pay-to-win mode. Hearthstone, for example, has a completely balanced drafting system based entirely on skill and a bit of luck, as well as a constructor system which doesn't necessarily need expensive paid cards, but they sure help. Implementing a free-to-play system that encourages players to pay will always be a fine point in the gaming industry. And developers need to make sure they don't misunderstand the word encourage. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. Remember, you guys get to decide the topic, and it doesn't have to be gaming related, so leave a comment below with what you'd like me to rant about. All reference links are in the description.